We are officially through two weeks of college football. And as we all know, this is the final season of the Pac-12 as we know it. After this year, many of the big Pac-12 schools will be leaving to head to other organizations. If you don't already know, there are four teams leaving for the Big Ten and four teams leaving for the Big 12. USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington are all heading to the Big Ten next season, while Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah will all be heading to the Big 12 next season, and the Big 12 is also losing Texas and Oklahoma next year to the SEC. And news just got out that Cal and Stanford are also leaving the Pac-12, so there's just two teams left as Cal and Stanford will now join the ACC Conference. And the last two teams in the conference are Washington State and Oregon State, and they will likely not have anywhere to go. And there are only two teams left in the Pac-12. So of course it makes total sense that the Pac-12 is the best conference in college football so far this season. After only week two of the college football season, the Pac-12 has eight teams inside the AP Top 25. The highest ranked team, USC, is ranked at number five. Washington is also in the top 10 as they come in at number eight, and Oregon is ranked at number 13. Next, Utah is ranked at number 12, even without their starting quarterback, Cam Rising, as he is injured, and Oregon State is ranked at number 16. Next up, we have the most interesting team in the Pac-12, Colorado coming in at number 18 and Washington State coming in at number 23. And lastly, UCLA is ranked inside the top 25 as they come in at number 24. So that makes up eight teams ranked inside the top 25 and the next closest conference is the SEC and they only have five teams ranked in the AP top 25. So does this alone make the Pac-12 the best conference in college football this season? Um, not necessarily. We must also take some looks at some other things. Next up, we have the college football team's records. Here on the screen is an absolutely crazy image depicting the college football conference's records against uh, non-conference Power 5 programs. And as you can see, the Pac-12 is leading this category as they are 6-3 against Power 5 programs, and the SEC is actually currently in last compared to all other Power 5 conferences. And this is just absolutely mind boggling, but it makes more sense when you look at the SEC having some tough losses with Alabama losing to Texas and LSU losing to Florida State in the first two weeks. But to really understand how good this conference is, we must take a deeper look into each and every team in the Pac-12. So let's kick it off with the USC Trojans. As we all know, USC has an amazing offense led by the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams. However, USC's defense has looked a little suspect in their games so far. USC has had a pretty easy schedule so far. However, they did get tested against San Jose State and the defense did look bad, allowing 28 points. However, their first real test will come in in two weeks as they will have to take on the Colorado Buffaloes. Speaking of Colorado, let's look at that team next. They are of course led by the man, the myth, the legend, Deion Sanders and his son, Shador Sanders at quarterback. Through two weeks, Colorado has proven that they are a legit contender in the Pac-12 this season and that they have a very ferocious offense led by Shador Sanders at quarterback. However, the defense has actually been the surprising bright spot on this team as they completely shut down Nebraska last week. And Colorado's first huge game of the season comes in two weeks on September 23rd as they will have to take on the Oregon Ducks. Speaking of the Oregon Ducks, let's look at their football program next. Just like the other two teams, the Oregon Ducks has a high-flying offense that has looked amazing through two weeks of college football, and they really proved how good they can be when they dropped 81 points against Portland State. Oregon is currently ranked number 13 in the college football AP polls. However, they looked extremely shaky last week against Texas Tech. They would only manage to beat Texas Tech 38-30, and their first real test is again against Colorado in two weeks. Next up, let's take a deeper dive into the Utah Utes football program. The Utah Utes faced off against Florida in the very first game of the college football week one schedule. And on national television, they proved that they are legit as they knocked off the Florida Gators. However, last week they regressed as they would only end up beating the Baylor Bears 20 to 13 and this was just an absolutely bad game for the Utah Utes. However, we must remember that they are doing all this with a backup quarterback. They are currently missing their star quarterback, Cameron Rising, as he was still recovering from tearing his ACL in the Rose Bowl. When he gets back, the Utah Utes program will be firing on all cylinders, and hopefully he is back in two weeks, as that is their biggest test of the year so far as they face off against the UCLA Bruins. 
Speaking of UCLA, they will be the next team that we are going to be discussing. Nobody really had huge expectations for UCLA this season. However, they have started off the season 2-0 so far, and Chip Kelly has done a brilliant job developing their young freshman quarterback. And they will face their biggest test in two weeks against the Utah Utes. Next up, let's talk about the laughing stock of the Pac-12 this year, Stanford. Stanford is currently 1-1 one one this year, however, their win came against Hawaii, and their loss came in a blowout to USC last week. Stanford probably has the worst offense in the entire Pac-12 this year, and I do not see their record being any better than 3-9 this season. Next up, let's discuss one of the mediocre teams in the Pac-12, Arizona. Arizona has started off the season 1-1, one and, one, and this is not a surprise. They beat an easy team in week one and then lost this week in overtime to Mississippi State. Their first big test comes against USC in a couple weeks and I do not see this team going any better than 6-6 six six this year as they will probably be one of the most average teams in the Pac-12. Next up, let's discuss one of the big dogs and one of the playoff hopefuls in the Washington Huskies. Washington is currently ranked number eight in the nation in the AP poll, and this is due to their ferocious offense. They have many star-studded wide receivers. However, the person that runs that offense is their quarterback, Michael Penix. He recently transferred to Washington within the last two years, and he has proven that he is an absolute dog in college football, as he has been one of the best quarterbacks in recent years. And with him, I see big things for this Washington football team in 2023. And their first real test does not even come till October 14th as they will take on the Oregon Ducks. The next team we will be discussing is Arizona State. Arizona State has started off the season one and one with a tough loss to Oklahoma State in week number two. And this is another one of those mediocre teams in the Pac-12. They most likely will probably go five and seven this year and finish as one of the bottom teams in the Pac-12. Next up, we will be discussing Washington State. Washington State has started off the season 2-0 and they picked up a huge win last week against Wisconsin. They are currently ranked number 23 in the nation, but I don't know how long this will last. Their offense is alright and their defense is below average, however, I think that this team will probably still finish in the 7-5 range this season. Next up, we have the Oregon State Beavers. Oregon State is proving all the doubters wrong as they are currently ranked number 16 in the nation right now. So far this year, they are 2-0 and they have played two extremely easy teams and have blown both of these teams out. And their first real test doesn't come until September 23rd when they will face off against Washington State. Cal has started off this season 1-1 one one with a tough loss to Auburn last week and a heartbreaker 14-10 score. This season, their defense looks extremely well. However, that offense is awful. I think they will finish towards the end of the pack in the Pac-12, probably go finishing the season 4-8. and eight. So there's my breakdown of each team individually, but I would be doing you guys a disservice if I didn't talk about the conference as a whole. As I already stated, the Pac-12 has eight teams currently ranked in the AP Top 25 poll. However, this is not their best attribute. Their best attribute is their offenses. The Pac-12 is loaded with offensive talent from Washington's offense all the way to USC's. They have the best offenses in the country. However, when it comes to defense, they definitely do lack in this department. The defenses of this conference definitely do not compare to schools in the Big Ten or the SEC. However, the Pac-12 is different from those conferences as they are not top heavy. They have a decent team at every level. In the Big Ten, they have three big heads. The Ohio State Buckeyes, the Michigan Wolverines, and the Penn State Nittany Lions. And in the SEC, they have two, the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Georgia Bulldogs. While in the Pac-12, they have potentially five, even maybe six teams that could potentially make the college football playoff this year. So based on that, I think that the Pac-12 is the most balanced conference right now in college football. And I think through week number two, they are currently the best conference in college football, but this could totally just be an early season overreaction.